Yeah, I think it's the, the core value prop here, right? It's like, and by the way, like massive shout out to Anthropic and a massive community of folks that helped shape this because that's the goal is we know for a fact that a lot of developers, they're not necessarily interested in diving deep in like the intricacies of security because to me, if you're, you're building an MCP server for, I don't know, managing your sales data, you're not necessarily a security expert. You don't want to be a security expert because it's like, all I care about is making sure that people that need to access my sales data can access that sales data. How do I do this properly? So it's in a way that is secure, it's governed, my organization has access to it. If your organization uses, whether it's Okta or Entry ID, can I just plug it in and run with it instead of me having to implement it? And I think that's the, that split between the responsibilities that Aaron was talking about is crucial to enable this because then as a developer, I know what concerns I need to be worried about and I know what concerns I can just say, oh, this authorization server here will handle it for me. It feels like very much the, the kind of encapsulation that we always strive to, for in our code, right? It's all this, depend on this interface. I don't really care or know how that interface is implemented. That I, I trust that the, whoever built the in, implementation of that interface did a good job, but I just care about the interface. And that leaves me yes. the freedom to say, oh, okay, assuming that interface works, I'm going to go do the stuff that I care about. I don't Absolutely. have to worry about building both sides of that. Oh yeah. And think about it too. Like it's a strategy for risk mitigation, because if you were an organization, do you trust that your developers, every single developer that's going to build an MCP server is going to have the expertise and knowledge to properly know how to mint tokens, how to sign them, how to store them, how to make sure that they rotate them, right? Like th there's a lot of complexity involved and I'm not saying that developers can do it, they can, but the risk of getting it wrong is very high if you, this is not what you do day in, day out. So would you rather have developers do that or would you rather use an established provider or an established open source solution that can just plug and play? So then you were the you were the leader on the PR to go update the OAuth spec in the MCP protocol the way that Aaron was talking about, and that ended up being way more popular than I expected. I, I, it was sleepy for a couple of days, and then suddenly I blinked, and there were like 300 comments from pretty much everybody who's anybody in the space came out and were talking about it, proposing ideas. Big shout out to you for even just keeping up with that fire hose of of comments. But one thing that I really noticed was a lot of folks were really excited about this, codifying this split and having MCP follow OAuth best practices. But something I saw people getting confused about was now that we're adding auth to MCP, that means I'm super excited because that means that I can auth all my downstream tools. That means I have, that means I have Google auth built in or I can auth to Slack or Spotify built in. And there was a lot of kind of initial people just going around in circles in the discussion, I think, talking about that when what you were really trying to bring everybody back to was, we're actually not even talking about that. We're just talking about like client server auth. So how would you describe the difference to someone yeah. who might be not even realizing that nuance is important? Yeah. First of all, like you call me like the leader. I don't know if that's the right term. Like I, I happened to open the PR, but it was all community work. <laughs> like all of you on this call, by the way, Aaron, Wills, Nate, like you were like, phenomenal and getting like feedback and shaping it like it would like it's not me it's literally so many awesome people that did that and i think that to your question though like what the difference is when folks think about connecting specific services like they think about a scenario in mind i want my mcp server to i don't know analyze my email or summarize my pdfs that are stored in dropbox or something like that they think about it in terms of a scenario and it's, oh for me to log into dropbox i need dropbox credentials that's it right how do i get the credentials but there is an interesting part here that sometimes get missed is that separation of concerns is that you no longer talk it's not like a desktop or cursor or windsurf or vs code talk directly to dropbox they talk through your mcp server is the conduit to those other apis what that means in practice is when Dropbox issues a token, it issues it to a specific client, right? And in this case, the question becomes, who's the token issued to? And what, what is missed from a lot of this conversation is again, this wall where I'm the client, Claude Desktop, I'm not the one talking to Dropbox. So I have an MCP server that happens to talk to Dropbox. And what I'm implementing is I am protecting my MCP server. That's that first step. And then the MCP server will talk to Dropbox. So this first hop is what we're talking about here is I'm protecting the MCP server. I'm protecting this, the resource server in kind of the OAuth parlance and the client is talking to the resource server. So I need to get a token for the MCP server itself, whatever my MCP server is doing. And then it's the responsibility for the MCP server to say, okay, now I know that you're an authorized user. You have a valid token. 
how do I talk to Dropbox? And this is where the second step comes in. So now you need to make sure that you connect your server to Dropbox. And this is, I know that you folks have been looking at that. You have a document. We're not going to do any spoilers here. But th that second step is completely separate for can I access this server to begin with? The question is not can I access Dropbox. It's can I access this MCP server that happens to also be talking to Dropbox? Because also you run into scenarios where MCP servers can do a million things. You can have an MCP server that connects to Dropbox, Gmail, Slack. It can start going directly to OpenAI, and OpenAI requires like API keys and not actually OAuth. You wouldn't be able to just say, oh, for every single one of those requests, I'm going to somehow like have you, the user of OpenAI, authorized to use. That makes no sense, right? Like I, you have to have access to that server and then have a modality by which that server can expose connections to other services that it might be using. And today it could be one, tomorrow it could be five, 10, 20, whatever. So there's a very clear separation of concerns here. And this is where I, I keep hammering it home, but it's like you, you're authorizing yourself to the MCP server that can talk to something else, not to those downstream ser servers or like the resource servers, the other APIs just yet. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's such, such an important distinction, Dan, and what you're calling out the distinction that you are calling out of we're talking about protecting the MCP server and making sure that the clients that talk to it, the MCP clients that talk to it are authorized to do. And then whatever that MCP server does downstream is separate. And I think that distinction is really important to keep in mind. That may be OAuth and that may be other things, but that's Aaron key. Just, 